What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers who ruined their bodies for the business. We know a lot of legendary wrestlers that have literally tore their bodies to shreds just to entertain us. Mick Foley is definitely one of them. <laughs> uh, the stuff he did in the Hell in a Cell alone with The Undertaker just lets you know how much he ravaged his body just to entertain us just within that one match uh you have edge you have kurt angle the undertaker you know and then there's plenty of others that have torn ligaments broken bones all types of things just to entertain us just to keep the business going man and they deserve all the respect and adulation for putting their bodies on the line majority of the year man it's it's quite insane and uh we're gonna check out some of these wrestlers that really tore their body up just to entertain us man appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one wrestling is tough <clears throat> i swear we forget about this today as we focus on some nonsense instead but honestly what wrestlers go through is mad they deserve all the respect even like so said. safe performers find their bodies turning on them in later life and it's important to note this down gave us a lot and shouldn't just disappear into the night therefore i am simon of what culture please do hit that subscribe <clears throat> button this is 10 wrestlers who ruined their bodies for the business number 10 the dynamite kid a super sad story all around we may mm -hmm. not have wrestling as we know it today without the dynamite kid why so so many modern wrestlers cite him as an influence because he used his speed and hard-hitting nature to wow audiences all over the place. He did pay a price, though, because not only did he have to retire early due to injuries he'd built up, but he was mostly wheelchair-bound before yeah. passing away at just 60 years of age. Jeez. This is just a horrible tale. His fellow grapplers also said he put a tremendous strain on his body due to various drug use, but it really was the crazy bumps that took him out. Man only knew one speed, and that's what he was going to do. Photos and clips of Tom Billington towards the end of his life don't make for pleasant viewing either. He really did wreck his body chasing the dream. Damn. Nine, Kevin Rest in Nash. peace. Everybody loves Kevin Nash. Yeah. He speaks his mind as openly <laughs> and as honestly as anybody. That's subjective. Podcast is a must listen. Dude will just talk. I'm sure Kevin himself would admit he didn't take any unnecessary risks either, but this does sum up how taxing wrestling is. Due to his sheer size and years of basketball before getting into the industry, his knees took an absolute pounding throughout his career. Yeah. And that resulted in multiple surgeries. Nash has also posted pictures of himself Jesus, with lower Jesus, bro. I may not agree with his takes, but look at his knee. Look at that, y'all. Look at how messed up his knee was before, I'm guessing, one of the surgeries. Jesus, bro. Look at that. Oh, that's I'm grabbing my knee. Oh my god, it's amazing what the doctors were able to do. Jesus, notice me smaller than his top path. That's because, yeah, he needs to balance all of this out. Thankfully, today he does seem to be in a much better position, which is always good to hear. But it goes to show wrestling is super hard no matter your approach. Facts, always why we've got to be as respectful as possible, and why you probably shouldn't make ha ha Kevin Nash quad jokes. Do you yeah. think he wanted that to happen? Of course not. Number eight, KG Muto. Also known as the Great Muto, <laughs> this poor guy. He retired in 2023, and if you are wondering, he's struggling to walk because here's another dude whose Jeez. knees were just shattered by the end. I honestly don't know how he did what he did. This was even more impressive as the problems began in the late 90s where he needed serious surgery. A lot of this was due to his shining wizard of moonsault. Stands to reason, right? He had taken this joint and just slamming it around. Oh That's why towards gosh, the end of his man. run, the moonsault was moved to one side because Muta just couldn't do it anymore. I truly think it's amazing he can even walk, all things considered. Yeah. I mean, just go look up what he's been through. Once you've done that as well, make sure you watch the matches too. Makes them even more impressive, right? At times, he basically had no legs and yet was putting on five-star classics. That's crazy, bro. Number seven, The Undertaker. Yep, if Undertaker deserves to be injuries, on this list. Mark Calloway would still be appearing at WrestleManias today. Mm -hmm. He's talked about this in multiple interviews, but we're here again. The Undertaker went for so long, his body caught up with him. This is nothing new, though, as many a podcast discussing the dead man have talked about, because he would constantly strap himself up and battle through all these problems to the marvel of his co-workers. Mm -hmm. No one actually knew how he was doing it. Even in the infamous Hell in a Cell match with Mick Foley, you'll see him wince when he falls into the ring because, yep, he was basically working with a broken foot. This guy wow, is just a warrior. Bro, There's also footage on the last Rock documentary of him basically falling through a curtain after matches. And there's that terrifying story from Mania mm -hmm. 30 when Brock Lesnar broke the streak. 
Taker was so concussed he had to go straight to the hospital. It's why the Finale was never happy with his scraps against Roman Reigns and Goldberg towards the end of the run yeah. because he knew he couldn't perform as he would have liked. I mean, this happens to us all, but still, it must be hard to accept. You want to do it, but you just can't, and you have to walk away for good. Sucks. That's yeah, sick. man. It's just one of those type of things where it's like his body caught up to him. Dude was out there giving it all he could for all these years and and his body just couldn't take it. And that's why it's like it's it's truly impressive to see how long these guys have been able to go out there and entertain us. And when people say it's fake, tell the tell that to the individuals whose bodies have been ravaged from the years of wrestling. Tell that to them, man. Terry Funk. I mean, Terry Funk may be the toughest Rest guy peace, ever. Terry, man. Not just in wrestling either. I'm talking about on Earth. The man he has fought through is insane, and it wasn't until 2017 when he hung them up for good, even though he was told by medical professionals in 1999 to stop. If you can't do the math, that's almost 20 extra years. To put yeah. this in perspective, Terry debuted in 1965 Woo. and was so astute to the industry that when he wanted to keep his stock high, he transitioned to a hardcore style and reinvented himself. Funk is an all-timer, no doubt. Mm -hmm. It did mean come the 90s, Terry was struggling, though, just because he had put his body through so much, especially that ECW run. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, and you should check it out, but it came at a massive price. His love for wrestling kept him going, though, until he physically couldn't do it anymore. By all accounts, the Funker doesn't move very well these days. The memories he gave us, though, he is an absolute legend. And, and I'm fun. guessing this is obviously yours. Uh, I want to say this definitely was filmed... Uh, before he uh, recently passed away. So rest in peace, Terry Funk, man. Legend in the game. Definitely was putting his body through hell. And this next individual, Kurt Angle, we know how much he was putting his body through pain and whatnot, breaking his neck multiple times and subsequently getting addicted to, to pills uh, to help with the pain, but was still out there trying to give you five-star classics. Five, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle only knew one thing to do in the ring. You give 100% and that was just your baseline. It's why he too is one of the best ever. Mm -hmm. A famous story has come from this though, as Steve Austin recounted. One day these two were chatting on the phone and when our Olympic hero had to go to the bathroom, he was forced to crawl there. Yep, that is what Angle did to himself. I mean, even before he wow. debuted, he had won a gold medal with a broken frickin' neck. And throughout his tenure in WWE, he just had to deal with more of these problems as well as his knees giving out too. As of me speaking, he's just had some major surgery on his back. Kurt left nothing out there. If you do need more evidence for this, go and listen to the build-up to WrestleMania 19 and his match against Brock Lesnar. Angle was basically risking his life for that show. Mm -hmm. It's totally insane. It was so crazy, I don't think anybody would be allowed to do this today, given how 2023 operates, but I tell you, he will forever be right up there, and few will ever come close to what he did. Much like RVD, the man was one of a kind. Before Edge, Adam yep, Copeland Edge has never been to be shy on this with list his too. words. He had to retire early in 2011 because of the toll wrestling took on his body, mostly due to those crazy ladder matches. Yeah, I mean that does make sense. His prognosis was so bad, doctors told him that one bad bump could paralyze him. Mm -hmm. so WWE told him that was that, and he just have to retire as the champion. It was all super emotional because nobody saw it coming just happened it's why yeah. when he returned in 2020 it blew people's minds a legendary this was moment bro happening situation and now he gets to retire for a second time on his terms it has to be nice for his brain too you don't want to stop doing what you love because your body shuts down mm -hmm. you want to kick your own ass it's also allowed mr copeland to continue to climb that ladder ironically whereas now everybody does see him as an old-timer even though to be honest without the return I would have put him there anyway. Number three, the Harding. Yeah, for sure, man. Edge, he, he's part of our childhood. Him having to retire the first time was very emotional. But seeing him come back and seeing how happy he was to be back in the thing that he loved the most, it was it's, it's dope. And, you know, uh, to see how he ended it on his own terms. And we'll see if he does end up in AEW. There's rumors circling that he may be there, maybe going there. So, I don't know. But uh, either way, the dude put on fantastic matches with the Hardys, with the Dudleys, putting his body through all types of hell just to entertain us, man. So we are talking about both Matt and Jeff here, because, man, 
the risks they took. Woo! Jeff Hardy is always the go-to because he was far more bonkers than his brother when it came to over-the-top moves. Jesus Christ, bro. I really don't get how he can walk. Go back and watch the mania bump where he smashes his ass into the floor. Oh, my that edge God. from the ladder. Oh, he would have goodness. killed a lesser person. Matt also had to have crazy surgery on his back, though, after years of doing those middle rope leg drops. And don't forget, he was kind of off the wall, too. Mm -hmm. Not like he was just doing headlocks and slams. Dude was flying. The other reason we have included them is because both have been through a hell of a lot in their personal lives, mm -hmm. which they've talked about on various shows. Thankfully, it seems like they both found balance and peace is far more important than wrestling. Their Daredevil star also inspired a hell of a lot of wrestlers who are yep. at the top of the tree. Like Darby Allen. And their story really is something else. Number two, Mick Foley. Of course he had so to be on this list. So you must have known that Mick Foley was yeah. coming, and if you didn't, you don't watch wrestling. Yeah, the there's no way. Foley was willing to go should never be forgotten, because he was a man who allowed The Undertaker to throw him off the Hell in a Cell. I don't care, man. 25 years on, still not topped, never will be. Yeah, when never, you do go through his injuries top, too, bro. it's genuinely horrendous. And when you see Mick walk today, you can see that this took its toll. I wouldn't say that he moves very well. Nope. It's why at some points the likes of Ric Flair called him a glorified stuntman, but that is just so unfair and mm -hmm. so wrong. Although I do want to point out that these two have since made up. So when it came to Foley, nobody understood psychology like this man. Mm -hmm. And it's the fact that he would use these high-risk moves and tie it into the character. He was basically a genius. Yeah. Nobody generated sympathy like him either. And again, there's a thread running through this. The former mankind knew how to make you care about him. Yeah. Hence why he became one of the biggest baby faces ever. That's not a fluke. Foley has admitted he still has a way to go to fix all these elements. And I doubt he can never be 100% again. What a legacy he has left though. Another all time great. He definitely deserved to be on this list because it's, it's, it's Mick fucking Foley, bro. That hell in a cell, though that match, that mo those moments will never be top. Dude had a tooth lodged through his nose. And that's just one match. That's not including the plethora of other matches he's put over Triple H. He's put over uh, a young Randy Orton. Matches where he's putting his body. He put over a, a edge, getting speared through a flaming table. I mean, what are we talking about? It's it's Foley, bro. The death matches he's been a part of. Me personally, he damn near would have probably been number one if I did this list. But yeah, we see what number, number one, one is. Hulk Hogan. So I left the Hulkster to the number one spot. And Hulk Hogan's put his body through some stuff too. So he deserves to be on this list as well. Safer than Hulk when working. That's not a knock. You can make the crowd go wild because you touched your ear. Probably should just touch your ear. Hogan did the leg drop as his finisher night in, night out. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it crippled his back. Yeah. Literally. I mean, look at this picture. Jesus. It is Hulk's back, which is kind of a weird thing to say. Yeah, he deserves to be on this list. Whether you like him or not, the dude was definitely, he over time has just, back has been ravaged. Body's been ravaged. Okay. After almost 10 surgeries, which Jesus. is so intense, apparently he's also lost four inches in height. It's all down wow. to the compression, and this does make sense. Hogan was massive back in the day, so yeah. all this weight coming down on the mat constantly, you don't do that free of consequence. Yeah. Somehow Hulk still thinks he's coming back for one more match, but no. let's just not do that. We don't need any more pain in wrestling, plus there's all the other controversy too, which yeah. I just want to move to one side and never talk about because it's terrible. Let's just move on. Yeah. Know of any of the wrestlers who've ruined their bodies for the business? Make sure you let us know in the comments. Yeah, man. He needs to have... No, no. Don't come back. We good. You just retire. Do whatever else you want to do. <laughs> Make it racist rants or whatever. <laughs> but don't come back to the fucking ring. Please don't. But yeah, man. This was a very interesting video. A lot of people I expected to be on there were on there. Uh, but comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers that you know put their body through hell and that weren't listed on this list. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are on, on the channel. Road 250K. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.